Welcome to Alzheimer's Sunrise, lighting the way for patients and caregivers on Legends 100.3. Brought to you by Alzheimer's Community Care, providing help and hope for thousands of families for the past 20 years. Here's Mary Barnes, CEO of Alzheimer's Community Care. Good morning. This is Alzheimer's Sunrise, shining a light on patients and caregivers. I am Karen Gilbert from Alzheimer's Community Care. Happy to be with you on Legends Radio 100.3 FM. And today we have a special guest. We're thrilled to have with us this morning Connie Douglas, who's been with Alzheimer's Community Care for... Eight years. Eight years. Connie, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. And for the first seven or so years, you were a case manager, That's correct. helping families in the community that had a loved one that really needed to attend one of our specialized adult day centers, but maybe couldn't afford to do so. So you would be helping them to link with eligible financial resources, maybe through the Veterans Administration, if they were veterans, or through the Medicaid program, which pays for a specialized adult day care, or maybe one of our other grants or scholarships so that they could have their loved ones safe in a day center during the day. Now, within the last year, you have taken on a very, very important role with something called our Live Alone program. And we're very, very proud of this program. We actually uh, were able to launch it because of a federal grant. We were one of only 11 organizations throughout the country uh, given one of these grants which began back in September of 2015 and it's a three-year grant but we've decided that the special program you're heading right now is going to continue even after the grant period ends and that's called the Live Alone program and what we know is there are patients in the community who might be experiencing the early signs of Alzheimer's or a related disorder, but very much uh, wish to maintain their independence and continue living in their own homes. And so the Live Alone program is designed to support them in doing that. Now, a few weeks ago, we spoke with uh, someone called a care buddy. So you'll be able to talk a little bit more about your care buddies. And she gave us the perspective of how she's able to engage with the Live Alone patient on a weekly basis and actually uh, help us ensure that they remain safe. So Connie, if you could tell us a little bit about how do you learn of people uh, who might be living alone in the community and might be needing this Live Alone program? That's right, Karen. Um, I usually uh, learn uh, about the Live Alones um, through a referral from either a family nurse consultant or a referral from daycare or perhaps um, the VA social workers who work with us in conjunction with the Live Alones. Um, initially, I take the information and I make sure that there is a cognitive disorder to uh, make a home visit. That's one of the requirements. Excellent. Okay. And um, I do the home visit, and during this home visit, um, most of the time there's either one person or perhaps two people, we call them care partners, that they're somehow involved with the live alone. So even if the person lives alone, we know there are others involved in their lives. That's Somebody right. Somebody knows what's going on. Okay, so yes. you might speak with that person as well to get a feel of, of what's been going on with this patient. Mm, that's right. That's actually a very uh, positive link for us because it allows me to make the home visit and be able to um, observe and do uh, some testing. The, um, we do the, the cognitive the test. Cognitive we do testing. the brief we interview for mental status. That's right. Because what we know is if they are severely cognitively impaired, they they might have other needs. There might be other resources we need to link them with. But if they score high enough on that brief interview for mental status. So they do meet the criteria with that uh, high score. We, um, we do um, ask them to participate because this is not, this is a, uh, it's a voluntary program. 
So we have two forms. We ask them to participate, and in most of the cases they do because they're ex extremely happy that somebody has uh, made it to their doorstep to offer to receive our assistance. That's a very, very important point. Often they don't realize uh, how detrimental the isolation can be. So reaching out is, is greatly appreciated. We'll continue in just a moment. This is Alzheimer's Sunrise, shining a light on patients and caregivers. You can reach Alzheimer's Community Care at 561-683-2700. You can also send us an email to info at allscare.org. That's A-L-Z-C-A-R-E dot org. And if you do call us or send us an email, please tell us that you heard us on Legends Radio. You can also visit our website, allscare.org, uh, where you can listen to prior shows and also see a wealth of information. So getting back to the Live Alone program, when you explain the program, because again, the patient does need to agree to participate, it's totally voluntary, what type of reaction do you get when you explain that they'll have a care buddy, uh, someone they'll get to know who will call them on a weekly basis? How do they react to that? Uh, they're very excited because um, they, they are in such lack of uh, socialization that for them having a phone call once a week from a care buddy means a lot. To them, it's, it's just somebody that it's there to listen to them. Oh, and we know some of those calls could be fairly brief, and we also know some of them can be quite extensive. That's right. That's right. Some of the care buddies in Live Alone, they uh, develop such a bond that it's amazing. And they really look forward they, to that they weekly do. interaction. They do. In fact, I had one of my um, Live Alone's that I periodically call the Live Alone just to check how is uh, the relationship going with the care buddy. And one of them said that... Uh, uh, every time that the care buddy calls her, is uh, she revives me. Oh, oh my! And, uh, oh, that's so important. It was very, you know, very heartfelt hearing that from her. From that, that is alone. outstanding. And we have so many resources. We have so many people who have been a caregiver and have that experience and know how important it is. It's, it's, I know you're still recruiting care buddies. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still recruiting volunteers. If you're interested in volunteering with Alzheimer's Community Care, give us a call, visit the website, send us an email, uh, because we can tell you about this program. It's very rewarding, both for the patient, of course, where we want that benefit to be, but also for the person calling them. Absolutely. To know that they're making such a difference. So tell me a little bit about your typical care buddy, because you have eight eight care buddies right now actively making phone calls. That's right. Uh, fortunately, the care buddies that we have um, have also been part of our support group um, uh, care, caregivers. They either uh, have uh, lost uh, a spouse and they're very educated in the disease process. So they're very helpful um, in this program and they're very willing to participate. Yeah, and we have support groups in Port St. Lucie. We have a group in Stewart. We have one in West Palm, Lake Worth, Del Rey, Boca Raton. <laughs> so yes. we have a lot of active support groups. So our, our uh, caregivers who have participated in the support group uh, really do have that viewpoint of what's needed to keep people safe in the community because they kept a loved one, uh, loved one safe in the community. The Family Nurse Consultant is a grant-funded service, so families should never hesitate. They're just investing their time to give us that opportunity to help. But again, getting back to these support groups, we know that when caregivers have taken care of a loved one and they've engaged in a support group and had that input, that back and forth with other caregivers, they are really very well positioned to identify the needs of a live alone in the community and to That's be right. alert when something isn't right. And, and you started to tell me a story recently when a care buddy alerted you. Yeah, this is very valuable uh, because even when um, a care buddy makes a phone call and the live alone is not answering, uh, that is a sign because there is then another repeated call and there's still no answer, then we know that something underlying is going on there. And in fact, um, we have a case in which um, the care buddy alerted me that uh, 
they live alone was not answering her phone calls. And uh, we came to realize that she was, hosp the live alone was hospitalized. And obviously we took the steps, the appropriate steps to reach out to the live alone and make sure that her transition from the hospital to the house and um, assistance was uh, made available to the home. And that's in incredibly important. If she had ha not had your team, there would have been this gap. She leaves the hospital, she goes home, and then what? And we know that patients with a neurocognitive disorder are at much higher risk to be readmitted to the hospital when that transition is not done properly. So that, that's incredible. We'll be back in just a moment. Alzheimer's Community Care is pleased to announce their 2018 Educational Forum, Thursday, May 17th at the PGA National Resort in Palm Beach Gardens. Family caregivers and health professionals will hear the latest on early intervention, research, and caregiver perspectives in Alzheimer's disease and related disorders. Health professionals will earn four hours of continuing education credit. Register by calling them at 561-683-2700 or online at alzcare.org. That's alzcare.org. Once again, please call 561-683-2700 or register online at alzcare.org. This will be an extraordinary educational event. Welcome back to Alzheimer's Sunrise. This is Alzheimer's Community Care, shining a light on patients and caregivers. And today we're talking about our special Live Alone program, which we're very proud of, and we know we're making a difference in the lives of those living alone with early effects of Alzheimer's or a related neurocognitive disorder. And we're trying to keep them safe in the community for as long as possible, maintaining that independence. Now, Connie, when your care buddies make their weekly phone calls, it's not just an open-ended conversation. They have specific issues they're checking on. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Um, that's correct. Yes. When the care buddy calls, they usually uh, have uh, five areas that they need to cover to make sure that um, they live alone is safe. Uh, they ask questions related to their nutrition, uh, whether they're socializing, uh, whether they're um, making their appointments to their doctors, um, safety issues, and as well as their financials, whether they're able to pay their bills or they're up to date with their bills, because that could really easily get into uh, a real mess. Let me ask you a question about that. If suddenly a patient were to say, oh yes, uh, Connie, there's a new person coming in every week, they're very nice and they're helping me pay my bills. Might that be a red flag for us? Absolutely. We have to make sure who that person is. And um, that's why we work closely with the care partners. And even that, you know, sometimes we have to question their motives at times. But So uh, if we knew there was a certain neighbor who's been helping for years and the family knows who it is and everybody's okay with that, that would be okay. That would be fine. But if suddenly yes. we hear I have a new friend... That yeah. might cause us concern, and we want to make sure that that person uh, has appropriate access uh, to checking accounts or whatever, that it's an appropriate arrangement. That's and not. And you might make a home visit to see absolutely what's going yes. on there. Yeah. So in the area of nutrition, uh, we'd be concerned about if suddenly they're skipping meals or they haven't been able to get to a grocery store, um, and uh, have we had any issues where we had to step in there? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question, yes. Um, it's very instrumental for us to make periodic, well, the family nurse consultant does a, a home visit every three months, and I usually try to visit with the family nurse consultant on every visit. And what we, we made some observations in some cases where we find spoiled food, spoiled meats. Oh my. And we, of course, um, let the uh, care partners know so that they can find an alternative way of um, making sure that the nutrition area is covered. And so we make referrals to uh, for some resources to get their nutrition, nutritional needs meet. Because they may tell you, oh, sure, I'm eating, and I eat my three meals a day. And right. I know sometimes we get into a home and there's virtually nothing in the refrigerator. That's right. 
And so we have to be concerned and then rally the resources to... Or they're capable of preparing a meal. Right. They may say they can, Mm, but but can they really? That's right. Or do we need to, again, rally some resources, meals on wheels, perhaps, Mm. or if someone's going to cook for them, that they prepare several at one time for the freezer, then can they microwave it? So there's a lot of moving parts to nutrition. That's right. That's right. And they're vulnerable to dehydration. They're vulnerable to malnutrition. So that's incredibly important. And, you know, not long ago, I was listening to a physician on the radio who talked about isolation being one of the most dramatic risk factors for progressive neurocognitive decline. So when your care buddy asks the patient, have you been getting out to see your friends or that card game you told me about, have you been playing? If suddenly they're not... That would be another issue for us. Yes, another red flag. And that live alone could attend our day center. That's right. Yeah, we have quite a few that they do attend our day center. So they could get socialized again and and, uh, come into the day center. And depending on what their background is, uh, for instance, if they were a teacher... (laughs) <laughs> they might come into the day center and be able to lead some activities and take a very, very active role because they would be a little higher functioning That's right. Uh, in terms of the cognition because they're living alone. Uh, if they organized an office for their career, we have things they could help with and organize. Uh, so there's lots of things they may be able to do to socialize again. And medical appointments, for the example you gave about our patient who was hospitalized. Right. uh, It's very important that she keep that appointment a week or so after she gets out of the hospital. Is that Mm -hmm. something we had to help? Oh, yes. uh, Yes. Um, We usually, um, sometimes uh, there's neighbors that they assist with, we call them care partners again, um, assist with transportation or arrangements are made um, if they're with the VA clinic, usually transportation to the VA. And, um, but like I said, again, um, for the live alone to manage their own health is a little tricky. So there's usually someone involved and transportation is wrapped in that uh, process. And safety, of course, if suddenly we find broken windows or the door doesn't lock or a step is broken, um, I know in other situation, situations, we've been able to step in and actually find the funds to get things fixed. We'll be back in just a moment and talk okay. about that last area, financial support. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Alzheimer's Sunrise, shining a light on patients and caregivers on Legends Radio. You can call Alzheimer's Community Care at 561 683 2700 or send a question to us by email. Info at allscare.org. That's A L Z C A R E dot org. If you call us or send us an email, please tell us you heard us on Legends Radio. Also, please visit our website, allscare.org, just like the email, A L Z C A R E dot org, where you can listen to some of our past uh, recordings and also uh, just. Uh, search through a tremendous amount of information on Alzheimer's disease and related disorders. So, Connie, let's talk a little bit about that last area we ask about again. Do they have enough money? One issue is if there's suddenly somebody coming in and handling their checkbook, we are concerned. But if all of a sudden um, they have issues with utilities, or it could be because they're paying their own bills and suddenly they're unable to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, have we had any situations there where we had to step in and help them get some resources? Um, well, the financial aspect is, is, is a very sensitive area. And most of the time, um, there's either a son or a daughter involved that uh, I, wouldn't, I would say in a good percentage of the cases that's involved in elect- in uh, taking upon that responsibility and involving in uh, electronic payment for certain bills, but um, so even if they don't live here, they could be that's living right. in another yeah. state, yeah. but they could take that on. That's right, and that's we encourage that highly. With uh, obviously either one of those uh, relatives or even 
care managers, they would have power of attorney yes. to manage their to manage their uh, yes. Uh, finances. And there are professionals who are geriatric mm -hmm. care mm -hmm. managers, and if a family is able, they might want to hire uh, someone like that to come in and oversee. Because it's not just paying bills, it's also looking at them to make sure they're correct. Right, And, right. you know, sometimes you get something in yeah. the mail that looks like a bill, but it's really a commercial yeah. solicitation. But someone yeah. who's cognitively impaired might write what? that check. Yeah. And we also have some of the other uh, common uh, scams, if you will. I know I've gotten this call three times that I owed the Internal Revenue Service $10,000 yes. and they're getting ready to sue me. And of course it was a total scam, but I knew it was a scam. But someone who's cognitively impaired might panic and write that check. And there's another um, issue where they send you a letter saying you've won $1 million. You just need to send us a credit card payment of $12.99. Uh, that's a, a common one. Yeah. It looks very official. And someone, again, with cognitive impairment might say, wow, $12.99, and I won a $1 million. So this is a good deal. So these are some of the things we want to shield uh, our patients from all of our patients, but particularly those who are living alone yeah. and might not have someone else there looking at the incoming mail. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I recall in one of our visits that um, we had uh, me and the uh, family nurse consultant uh, did a visit together, and this particular uh, live alone had all kinds of papers on top of her dining room table, and she was writing checks, but um, her son was coming after the fact and checking her checkbook and opening her mail, the checks that she had already sealed on an envelope just to make sure that what she was doing. And uh, of course, she was upset that her envelope was open, but it was for the safety of, of, of her uh, and did he find anything that really she shouldn't have been paying? Actually, she had two checks, and one check was in a different envelope than the other, so they would have been sent to different Wrong parts. Place, so, so. <laughs> but the fortunate part of this, too, I want to mention to you, is that had not have we, have we not seen what was going on at the time of our visits, I don't think, you know, we would have been aware of this. Of, of, oh, exactly, of this. exactly. And if she's paying utility bills, but yeah. the checks are going to the wrong place, That's she's right. at risk to have her utility discontinued. So uh, these are uh, amazingly important areas that you cover. Again, whether they're eating mm -hmm. uh, and on a routine basis, that they're not suddenly saying, well, I just eat one meal a day. That would concern us. And if they're socializing, if they're getting to those medical and dental appointments, if they feel safe, and if their home is secure, and if they have enough money and they're able to manage their expenses. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Alzheimer's Sunrise, shining a light on patients and caregivers on Legends Radio. You can call us at 561 683 2700 or send us a question by email to info at allscare.org a-l-z-c-a-r-e dot org and that is also our website where there is a wealth of information on Alzheimer's disease and related disorders and the various services that Alzheimer's community care can provide and also you can hear some of our past shows actually all of them through the website so welcome back to Alzheimer's Sunrise with Connie Douglas and our Live Alone program. So uh, tell us a little bit about special needs of veterans who may be living alone in the community. Um, so the um, veterans, they're a very special group in that they're very um, guarded and it's uh, much difficult to uh, live alone to assist. And what we're hearing is uh, veterans really mm. relate best to, to other, other veterans. veterans. So I know that you are recruiting care buddies. That's correct. Who are also veterans. And the Veterans Administration, those case managers are referring veterans to you. And they're, uh, the, case, uh, the uh, social workers, they are my support to get the uh, veteran to open up and be able to open their doors and allow the allow me to visit them. So um, that's um, how I start the process with them. And uh, uh, 
the uh, social worker usually uh, informs me about all the services that the VA is providing to the veteran. Excellent. So linking with the linking with the Veterans Administration social worker is kind of a pathway to link to that veteran in the community. And, you know, we may see more. Again, one of the issues with our recent conflicts are these closed head injuries, which are pro producing irreversible neurocognitive decline in some patients. It is similar to the pathology of Alzheimer's, uh, where Alzheimer's is a pathology of amyloid protein and tau protein. Uh, for those with those significant head injuries, it's typically the pathology of the tau protein. But we're learning more now about why we may see this actually in younger people. So uh, we definitely want to help our veterans in the community, again, maintain independence as long as possible, but to do so safely. Right. Critically important. Uh, Connie, thank you so much. We are we are thrilled with the Live Alone program. Again, we're fortunate that it grew out of a federal grant. It was one of four projects we took on in our federal grant, uh, but we're going to continue it. Uh, the care buddies who volunteer mm -hmm. are completely wedded to the program. They're very, very committed, and uh, we see it as a way to continue in the community supporting patients living alone with Alzheimer's or a related neurocognitive disorder. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to Alzheimer's Sunrise, lighting the way for patients and caregivers. To learn more about the help and hope available from Alzheimer's Community Care, call 561-683-2700 or visit allscare.org. That's A-L-Z care.org. Tune in next Sunday at 630 for another edition of Alzheimer's Sunrise, lighting the way for patients and caregivers right here on Legends 100.3.